Good morning guys, happy Saturday and welcome back to the channel. This is Overkill bringing you a new Basic Fundamentals course where we're going to be starting to take a look at the F-14 Tomcat. We will still be doing the KA-50. Um, everything's just put in kind of hold for a minute with the KA-50. Uh, I was in the process of building a new desk for the office, getting all that set up as well as work and obviously reading up on documentation for preparation for the launch of the F-14. Um, given the fact that she's obviously one of the most awaited aircraft in DCS is why I decided to put my priorities on the F-14 and then we'll fall back to the KA-50 and get that course completed as well. Um, but I just wanted to make sure there is as much content as we can get out for the Tomcat. Alright, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit. The first thing we're going to do today is go over all of the instruments and control panels and then uh, the next one will be the startup. So, coming down here to the bottom left, and we're just going to sort of work our way around here. All right. So, first back here, you have your auction switch. You want to make sure you start this every time before you start up, as if you get to uh, basically anything in excess of about 10,000 feet, you'll start to suffer the effects of hypoxia, which is what happens when the oxygen level uh, gets too low to a point that it can't sustain us. Okay, and you'll start experiencing blackouts and things of that nature and eventually lose consciousness and, you know, crash. Um, and then the knob here, which uh, looks like it's non-functional in the F-14, is the vent airflow. It's used to control the airflow through the uh, pressurized suit. And if you're not wearing a flight suit, it will pressurize the seat cushions in the aircraft. Coming up to uh, the panel up here, you have your volume control panel. So first you have the uh, ALR-67 knob. Our volume control knob. This controls the volume for the RWR. Then we have our sidewinder growl volume, followed by the uh, VHF UHF um, uh, 2 radio 2 volume knob. And then we have our TAC CAN command switches. So these are actually buttons here. If you want the pilot to be able to control the TAC CAN, you obviously press the forward button, the button will illuminate, and then again, obviously the inverse for the um, Rio. And speaking of the TAC hand, here we have our TAC hand radio. Um, let's get in a little bit closer on the TAC hand radio here so you can see something for a minute. That should be good. All right, so if we right click we, on the outer dial, you can change the bottom number. And then over here is the inner dial, just on the edge of the uh, this metal plate here. You can see that, and it goes up to 12, I believe. And again, that's with a right click, left click to reverse it back. Okay. Here you have your go and no-go lights indicating whether or not the TACAN is actually functioning. You have your bit test button here. You have your inverse or normal mode. Um, I have not uh, determined yet why we would put it in the inverse mode. So for the time being, as far as I can tell, you just leave it in the normal mode. And then here we have our uh, X-ray and Yankee toggle switch. Okay. Here's the TAC CAN mode switch. So we have off, receive, transmit, receive, air to air, and beacon. Okay, and of course the TAC CAN volume knob. Coming up here, uh, you have our AFCS or automatic flight control system. So here's our SAS switches. So you have pitch, roll, and yaw. Okay, and then here we have the autopilot control panel, the engage switch to actually turn on the autopilot system, ground track, heading track. Then you have your uh, vector and PCD mode and the um, oh sorry back that up. <laughs> this switch here is your altitude hold mode and then up here is your vector and PCD mode and the ACL automatic uh, or more love assisted carrier landing modes. And to discuss that for a minute the vector PCD mode means or will um, give control of the axis and uh, or the pitch axis and roll axis to the data link um, and then the ACL is the automatic carrier landing mode um, now all three of these modes once the so you use the engage switch to actually turn on the autopilot system and then once you have your desired control you will engage the autopilot um, flight controls with the nose wheel steering button on the stick Okay, and then backing up a little bit here, I skipped our ICS system. We have the ICS system here, which is the um, intercom system. So you have your volume system, 
you have the backup amplifier, normal mode, and the emergency amplifier. Emergency amplifier is if the first two aren't working, um, you can switch it to emergency and you will use the Rio's um, amplifier system. But this also means that you will lose the ability to control the volume of the intercom system, as well as lose the ability to hear um, things such as the sidewinder acquisition, as well as um, any kind of uh, engine warnings that may come up. You won't be able to hear those audibly, okay? And then here we have the uh, cold mic, which will require the use of push to talk, hot mic, which uh, no longer requires the use of push to talk to talk to the Rio as well as the ground crew. If the interphone system is plugged in, the interphone is, um, if you've ever seen a YouTube video of the flight crew um, prepping the aircraft for flight, you'll see that uh, the crew chief will have a long cable. Um, that is stringing from him up to the aircraft going up to his headphones. Um, that allows him to talk directly to the pilot without using over-the-air radio. Okay, and then you have here the radio override. And what that will do is the intercom or interphone system will take precedence over any radio traffic that's coming in. Okay. All right, so moving forward here a little bit. Let's go ahead and back out just a hair. So here we have our UHF radio. So first thing we have is the uh, UHF radio mode. So I don't know why that keeps happening. Something keeps taking my zoom away and it's getting really annoying. So here we have our uh, radio preset and this will be controlled by the mission editor. If you change your mission editor radio presets, you can then uh, use this knob here to select the different radio stations that were set in the mission editor as long as you're in preset mode. Manual mode, you can manually change the frequency that the radio is currently using. And then guard is the uh, frequency that is sort of the catch-all for everybody to be able to hear what's going on as long as they're tuned into that station. Okay. I'm not quite sure why my zoom keeps going away, so forgive me for that. We're just going to ignore it for now. Um, and then here we have our volume knob for the UHF radio. If we are in manual mode, you can change the frequencies here. You have your frequency display screen, obviously, up here. You have your brightness knob, and then here you have the, um, ah, this toggles the display of the uh, currently, uh, whether it's frequency or channel. Okay, so by selecting this button, you will be able to determine whether it's on, what channel it's on or what frequency it's on, depending on your, your uh, preference. And then here you obviously have the squelch button, or squelch knob, excuse me. And then here, um, we have our function selector, which we can use either the main radio, both radios, or the ADF, okay? And then here would be your um, radio load switch, which actually isn't currently modeled as well as the tone option. All right, so moving up here, we have our um, throttle control panel. Over here, there's two switches. There's one underneath here that you can see the uh, green indicator there and then you have the one for the right engine so one left one right and this will put in either stow or automatic mode for the inlet ramps for the respective engines and the inlet ramps are right here okay that's where you can find those and this will either stow the ramp um, reducing the um, uh, intake of the engine or it will put it in automatic mode which will allow it to open and close as the engine feels or as the system feels necessary you have your engine crank switch switch it to left to start the left engine switch it to right to start the right engine once the engines read their uh, d required uh, rpms the switch will automatically put itself back into the centered position over here we have our throttle mode we have automatic mode which will automatically reduce it back to um, boost what the engines are off um, you have your boosted mode and you have your manual mode. Um, I will go further into this when we get into the later tutorials um, of the aircraft, as well as over here, we have the throttle temperature. We have hot, we have normal, and we have cold. And I believe that has to do with the exterior temperature. Um, but again, we'll get more information on that when we start going through the uh, startup procedure on the next tutorial. We have our auto start switch. You can put the auto start into automatic, which uses a backup uh, ignition system, or you can go with the uh, normal mode, which is by default. I can't think of a reason yet of why we would not, or why would we would want to take it out of normal. Um, I need to get confirmation on it. However, I do believe that the backup ignition system will allow the aircraft to start without um, the use of air supply, but I need to confirm that, okay? And then you have your rudder trim switch, which currently isn't modeled in the aircraft. Coming over here to the throttle, 
here we have our uh, wing sweep indicator. Now on the wing sweep indicator, there are four commands. You're gonna wanna map these to your HOTAS somewhere, okay? So first you have the auto mode, which will the, cause the wings to automatically sweep forward or, or aft, depending on the speed of the aircraft. You have your um, forward button, automatically swings the wing forward. You have aft, automatically swings the wing aft. And then we have the bomb mode. Now bomb mode is a little bit different. If the wings are full forward, or forward above 55 degrees, so only 40 degrees sweep, anything 54 degrees or below. When you select bomb mode, the wings will sweep back to 55 degrees. If the wings are swept past 55 degrees and you select bomb mode, it will use whatever the current wing setting is. For example, if your wings are currently at 65 degrees uh, of sweep or 60 degrees of sweep and you select bomb mode, um, the wings will stay at 60%. They will not come forward to 55%. Okay, so something to keep in mind there. All right, coming up here to the next one, you have your speed brake switch. And then finally, we have up at the top, we have our ICS uh, push to talk keys. Okay, so there are um, four keys here. So first is the ICS key intercom to the Rio. Okay, so allows you to speak directly to the Rio. Then you have both. Uh, keys for the UHF and UHF-2 for radio transmission, and then you also have a UH, UHF-1 and UHF-2. Um, so you can either use one radio, two radio, both radios, or the intercom, okay? Then if we were to take a peek over at the uh, front of the throttle, now I don't see them mapped here, but um, there should be... Um, a button on each one of these throttles here, but I don't see them actually indicated. However, um, over here on the left throttle, there would be a button which is your PLM button or your pilot lock-on mode, okay, which allows you to use the uh, AUG-9 radar uh, basically in a merged combat situation or in, inside of 10 miles um, to lock on your um, uh, targets. Um, and it's also used to disengage the autopilot when in um, automatic carrier landing mode. Okay, and then on the opposite uh, throttle here, on the right-hand side, that's about where it should be, you would have the cage or seam button. Um, and this is your um, cage and uncage button for the AIM-9 um, to initiate the lock-on. And it was also used to disengage the... Uh, automatic pilot control or aircraft pilot control uh, when autopilot is in use. Okay. And then over here on the far left, you can't see it, but there's a little switch on the uh, far left of the left throttle. And that is our exterior light master switch. So allow you to, um, after you've configured your lights, you can flip all of your lights on and off with a single switch. Okay. At least the exterior lights to be more precise. Now we're going to go ahead and come down to the um, fuel control panel. Okay, so starting up here at the top, we have our um, uh, flight control indicators. So the bottom arrow, if I'm not mistaken, is our current elevator trim. Our The top arrow is your current roll axis. You have your spoiler um, indicators and your rudder trim. Um, for those of you who don't know, the spoilers are, um, if you've ever seen them on a large airliner, when an aircraft, when an airliner lands, there's big, what look like flaps that go up instead of down. And what they do is they um, help eliminate the lift that is being generated by the wing. Um, so it's used to a slow the aircraft down, but primarily to land the aircraft. We have our quantity, our fuel quantity select. So if we left click, we go into the external tanks. This will display on the fuel gauge on the right side what our current uh, fuel uh, rating is for the external tanks. Right click for the wing tanks and uh, feed is the current uh, feed rate and uh, quantity level of the fuselage tanks. Um, here, right behind the landing gear, I don't know if the landing gear handle, nope, pull the landing gear. So sort of an awkward position. I'm not going to move it over just to, for this one, but there is a switch cover. You lift the switch up and you can change what the feed is. So in normal, she's going to pull from all the tanks in sort of an even fashion, set it to after it'll pull from the aft fuselage tanks and then forward to the forward fuel fuselage tanks. And then over here we have our fuel probe. 
So right clicking once, it will extend the probe and only allow the fuselage tanks to be filled. Clicking again will extend the probe and allow all tanks, wing and external tanks, to be um, filled. If we put it all the way down into the lower position, it will retract the fuel probe. Now talking about the fuel probe for a second, we have our wing and external fuel transfer switch. So by default, it's in the auto mode. You can set it to off if you do not want um, fuel to be transferred from the um, external tanks to the um, wing tanks. Now something to be considered about the off button is if we extend our fuel probe to just the fuselage switch, we're okay because just the fuselage is being fueled. But if we want to kick it into the all and fill wing and external tanks, watch what happens with the transfer tank. Okay, it will automatically put it back into the um, auto position, so keep that in mind. Okay, and then override will force the transfer fuel from the external tanks into the wing tanks. Okay, then you have your fuel dump switch. If you're coming in for a landing or for whatever reason you need to dump a ton of fuel out of your aircraft to drop some weight, uh, you would set your dump switch, get to the desired fuel level, and then bring your switch back up. Here we have our master uh, reset for the flight control systems. Much like in the F-18 Hornet when you need to reset all your trim and flight um, controls in the computer side of things, this is how we would do so. Here we have our anti-skid and speed brake switch. If we click up to both, then at the time of touchdown, the anti-skid will be um, deployed as well as the uh, spoiler, sorry, not speed brake. Uh, spoiler brakes. Um, so what that means is, and what the terminology is, weight on wheels. So you arm this switch, you're coming in for a landing, you want the anti-skid on, so this would be, for example, um, like a, a ground landing, um, or anytime you need the anti-skid, I guess, is a more better way to put that. Um, you click up to both, and what would happen is when your main wheels touch the ground, the anti-skid will engage as well as the spoilers will come up. Okay, if you go into lower position, once you get weight on the wheels, only the spoiler will uh, deploy, okay? And that's how those guys work. And then real quick, um, while we're right here looking at things, let's go ahead and just take a quick peek up top. So starting here, we have the landing gear lever. Um, then up here, we have the landing gear transition light. When the light illuminates, it means the landing gear is in transition. It does not correspond to the position of the landing gear handle itself. You have the emergency down instructions. You would push the landing gear in and then turn it to the right, so like that, and pull. And that will drop the landing gear basically by gravitational force. Okay. Let's get it back into its standard position. Then you have the hydraulic isolation switch. Currently it's in the takeoff landing position due to the landing gear lever being down. You can see this metal uh, wing sticking off the hydraulic or the landing gear handle that's touching the hydraulic isolation switch. So when you drop the landing gear, if this switch is in the up position, it drops it down. Um, in the flight position, it isolates the hydraulic system from the landing gear, um, keeping uh, any chance of, of the hydraulic system activating the landing gear system. Then we have the uh, downlock override. This is currently not functional in DCS, um, but essentially what this would do is it would override the uh, weight on wheels solenoid. So when the weight is on the wheels, this is put down into its lower position, indicating that there's currently weight on the wheels. And if you ever needed to, you'd be able to override that, which would allow the, speed, the spoilers and things like that to um, activate, according to my understanding. Up here, we have the nose wheel strut. When you extend the strut, it will bring the nose up, and as well as the launch bar, and lock the launch bar into position. When you put it in the kneel position, the nose will drop, as you can see there, and you can see the launch bar also coming down as well. Okay, set it back to the off position. And then we have the parking brake handle. You have your ejection uh, indicator light. So if it says um, pilot, it means the pilot will eject both crew members. If it says Rio, Rio only, uh, the Rio ejection seat will only eject himself and if it says MCO each position will eject um, both crew members. We have the emergency storage jettison uh, push button when the jettison is active the light will illuminate. You have your control surfaces indicator uh, which we'll go over more when we get into starting up the aircraft in flight so that way you can actually see them activate. Looking over here to this panel here we have the hydraulic pressure indicator these gauges here 
um, are the oil pressure indicators which display the oil pressure for each engine ranges from 0 to 100 psi and normal is between 25 and 65 psi um, obviously varying with the engine rpm and then here we have the exhaust nozzle position indicators and what that does is if we come back to the rear of the aircraft you can see the exhaust nozzles there, right, at the end where we always look for the cool afterburner effect. And what this shows, what that gauge shows is the open and um, uh, closed position of the nozzles. Here we have our electronic instrument group. So first we have the uh, RPM gauges for each engine. So you can see that they have the left RPM and the right RPM gauge. Then we have the um, temp temperature inlet um, for the engines in Celsius by hundreds of degrees. And the last one is our fuel flow indicator. So this actually shows how much fuel is being uh, pumped into each engine. So it's not a fuel gauge, but this is the rate at which you are consuming fuel. Okay, and this will be in thousands of uh, pounds per hour. Okay. Okay, so starting here at the bottom left gauge here, we have the radar altimeter. The radar altimeter is activated by turning this knob here clockwise. And then you have the... Uh, radar warning limit uh, indexer this little triangle right here so whatever altitude that this triangle is currently pointing out once your aircraft drops below that you'll get the radar altimeter warning as well as this light right here will illuminate indicating that again you are below the warned altitude turning counterclockwise as you saw there will disable the system which shows the off uh, flag here now there are three ways in which this off flag will appear one there's no power to the system two the system is off as it currently is and three if you are um, have climbed to an altitude that the radar can no longer detect the ground level uh, the off flag will also illuminate at that point as well moving to left here we have our radar or our barometric altimeter but using the left knob here you can set the altimeter pressure the altimeter pressure can either be found in your briefing or the um, uh, air traffic controller and also can be changed in your mission editor if you're familiar with the mission editor usage okay you have your altimeter digital readout here or a mechanical readout that shows your altitude in hundreds of feet here and thousands of feet on the uh, square box over here and then also you have three different modes so if you are receiving uh, data from the CAD system you can hold the reset button for three seconds and it will reset the servo for no normal operation. If for any reason that you put it into standby mode, which with the system on it should lock in the standby mode, the reset position will automatically reset back to its standard uh, position here if you hold it and reset. But if you put it in standby, if for any reason the CAD system does not indicate the altitude or give any data for more than three seconds, it will go into a uh, backup pressurization mode. Um, up here you have your vertical velocity indicator indicating our ascent and descent rate in, in hundreds of feet per minute. So up here you have um, thousands of feet per minute and here you have 500 feet and etc. Okay. And then of course over here we have our speedometer indicating our speed in knots times 10 the digit readed or reading. So 10 times 10 for example you're doing 100 knots, 120 knots, 150 going up into the 0.7 or uh, Mach and increasing by Mach level from there on forward. Okay. All right. So that pretty much sums up the gauges here on the left-hand side. All right. So moving up to the upper control panel here, we have our AOA units indicator. This is not to be confused with degrees. It's units of AOA. Um, for further information on that, you might want to look up Wikipedia or something like that. It can be kind of confusing, so I don't even want to try it right now. But if it helps, you have 0 to 30 units of AOA on the gauge, which equates to approximately negative 10 to 40 degrees of uh, AOA rotation. Now, there's a couple indicators here that you want to be aware of that are quite helpful here. So here you see this. Uh, this is the five um, units of AOA for climb out, 8.5 for your cruise. So when you're at level and uh, steady cruise flight, you want your AOA to be at about 8.5 degrees or uh, units, excuse me, and then up here at the top you have your um, stall warning indicator at 29 units of AOA. Here you have your ACM or air combat maneuvering cover uh, uh, flap 
and then here you have the ACM or air combat jettison button now the air combat jettison button will be determined by what the what weapons the Rio has selected so if, for example if your bombs or uh, external stores of that kind are selected when you press this button the aircraft will set for air combat maneuvering and jettison all the stores with the exception of the aim nines even if the aim nines are selected they will not be jettisoned when this button is pushed okay moving on over here we have the um, indicator lights so the seam lock uh, this light illuminates to show that the sidewinder acquisition is progress so your sidewinder is actively looking for a target and then so it'll light up during the first four four and a half seconds of the search and then it will remain illuminated once the aim nine has um, locked onto a target you have your collision light here the collision light uh, will engage if the aircraft is steered on a course in which you have a single target track on with the radar so if you steer to a if you lock a target up with the radar and you steer onto a course that puts you on a collision path this light will um, illuminate and then finally here you have the hot trigger light the hot trigger light uh, will illuminate any time that the parameters are met where if you depress the trigger a weapon will be released you have your gun rate toggle switch you have high which will set the gun to disperse 6,000 rounds per minute um, and this is normally used in air-to-air -air operations and then low setting for 4,000 rounds per minute um, obviously used on the opposite for um, air-to-ground conditions okay and the lights will illuminate these are actual buttons and the lights will illuminate based on which is set then we have our sidewinder cooling switch um, if you select it manually you will manually set the sidewinder seeker to begin cooling um, this will automatically engage when air combat maneuvering mode is enabled same thing with the missile prep indicator uh, missile prep indication you will select this when you want to prepare the aim 54 or the aim 7 sparrow again automatically toggled when uh, air combat maneuvering is engaged you have your um, master arm switch so obviously release the cover master arm for training master arm for live munitions okay and then moving on down here to the uh, remaining gauges here we have your situation flags down here um, black indicates that a station is not loaded or a weapon is not ready white will indicate um, that the uh, station is warmed and ready to use the checkboard which we're seeing here um, indicates that a station is ready for launch okay so um, on the ground this will indicate that the fuselage rails are up and locked and uh, that the loaded weapons are in fact armed okay and then obviously we have our master caution button here in the middle the master caution will illuminate any time a uh, status change uh, on the aircraft causing the uh, caution panel to um, illuminate a warning um, you can press this to reset and turn off the light as well as um, uh, disable the audible warning now anytime that a new warning is um, presented obviously the light will reilluminate as well as the, the the warnings and then here you have your left and right engine fire warnings anytime that these lights illuminate you want to use the left or right the corresponding um, fuel uh, emergency cutoff switch to um, uh, engage the fire extinguishers as well as to shut the fuel off down here real quick you have your cab cabin uh, pressure in thousands of foot increments from zero up to 50,000 so this shows the current pressure inside the cabin based on the current altitude configuration so moving over here to our next set of gauges here on the right hand side let me actually kick the camera over just a little bit more so first we have our uh, current wing sweep indicator showing that they are currently retracted back to 68 degrees you will also see the off flag indicating that the system is currently disabled and there's no power to the aircraft when there's power to the aircraft you will get indicators here that will um, oop, didn't mean to do that um, letting you know what the current mode that the aircraft or wing sweeps in so if it was manual it would show man um, auto bomb and uh, uh, forward and aft if I remember correctly okay um, coming back down over here you can see back there we have our um, standard compass 
Coming down a bit, we have our standby ADI. You would remove the flag by simply depressing the button here, and then you can adjust by uh, uh, turning this knob left and right the um, correct pitch level of the aircraft. You have a current UHF uh, 1 radio, and then you have VHF and UHF radio, and you have the brightness knobs that indicates what frequency you're currently set to. Okay, we have our HSI, or horizontal situation indicator, letting us know what direction we're heading as well as our uh, distance to the waypoint. Um, here we have our radar warning receiver with a brightness knob. Coming down a bit. Oops, wrong stick. We have our fuel indicator, um, letting us know total pounds of fuel, what our current bingo set is. You can set your bingo by adjusting this knob here. You have your left and right fuel tanks. Okay, so you have your aft and left, and then you have your forward and right. Okay, showing the current fuel on board in um, thousands of pounds. Okay, we have our acceleration in units up to uh, in uh, G increments. So currently, obviously, there's no load on the aircraft, so we're at 1 G, 1 times the force of gravity, and then going all the way up to 10 Gs. 10 Gs guarantee you have, are having a bad day. And then here we have a standard mission clock. Okay, so coming up here to the top of the forward right uh, panel here, we have our resting hook handle. Bring it down, obviously brings the hook down through the hydraulic system. If for any reason the hook won't come down using the hydraulics, turn it counterclockwise and it will drop mechanically basically using the force of gravity. Okay, and then just turn it clockwise again to put it back in its default position. To the right here, you have your gun rounds counter. Now what you have to do is go to the armament window and verify how many rounds are currently on board the aircraft. Set your counter to match that same number, and then every time the round is dispersed, the counter should drop. Okay. Here we have our navigation and flight mode uh, buttons. We have takeoff mode, cruise mode, air to air, air to ground, and landing mode. On coming up here to the right side for the displays, we have the declutter switch for the HUD, the um, all-weather landing switches, so we have ACL for automatic carrier landing and ILS for instrument landing system. Then we have the um, VDI mode switch, which by clicking onto the TV mode will display the uh, uh, lantern. And then hit normal will display the standard um, VDI that we normally dis see. Okay, coming back over here for the VDI, we also have the automatic carrier landing and ILS indicators that will pop up on the screen, helping us guide to the aircraft. And excuse me, I believe it's actually the screen up here. I think I'm looking at the wrong one. But don't quote me yet. And then here we have our ECM override switch to force ECM to engage. We have our um, HSD mode which will show nav, um, TID, or which will display the Rio, um, I believe, target designated um, switch, and then the ECM option. And then coming down here, we have our power switches for the VDI, the HUD, and the HSD and ECM. Then here we have our steering commands. This will change the steering uh, command readout for the navigation system to the TACAN. Destination currently set by the Rio. Um, all weather landing or precision la or, uh, precision course direction. And then we have our vector. Vector is used to um, identify the uh, deviation steering from the data link. So if you're receiving a data link, it will show you that your current deviation is to the source. And then obviously manual allows you to select a manual uh, um, course um, for the steering command. And then here, this knob here will increase and decrease the brightness of the pitch ladder. And then this little guy down here will allow us to change the elevation for the gun lead uh, in mills for manual and air to air, to air and air to ground modes. Uh, the limits are between negative 263 and positive 87 mils. Okay, moving down to our last panel here. Here we have the uh, spoiler override systems. Um, the two covered switches here, one is for inboard, one is for outboard spoilers. To, by default, they're in the norm position, meaning they will be triggered by the configuration on the left-hand side, as we discussed earlier. If for any reason you need to force them to engage, you would simply flip these switches forward, whether you want the inboard, outboard, or both, and then uh, the spoilers will deploy. Okay. Here we have our master caution or bit panel um, warning lights. 
over here on the right hand side we have our compass control panel I'm going to go over this in further detail at a later time as it relates directly to the navigation portion um, of the system so it would be pretty hard to explain it right now with the system disabled okay here we have our ILS control panel power on for the switch the bit light um, can be pressed and also the light will illuminate when the system is on and powered and here you have your option of 1 to 20 ICLS and remember ICLS is used for carrier landings um, so you can program up to 20 channels into the system via the mission editor coming down here we have our um, lights and uh, hook indicators so coming down here we have our ACM warning lights um, we have our indexer lights instrument lights console formation light brightness anti-collision light switch we have our um, position lights that will either flash or be steady we have the brightness for uh, dim for the tail lights wing lights taxi light we have our floodlights for bright and this is for the white floodlight and then again same thing for the red floodlight which by the way I think is really cool um, we have our master generator switches that are used for the engine control so um, you can set these to off and reset or just leave them in the norm position I can't see why we would ever need to adjust those in DCS and then obviously you have an emergency control if you need to do so okay so for norm or you can reset them in an emergency and apparently once we do that I can't reset it so um, good to know all right I imagine it has to do with the fact that the system is currently off then we have our air condition switches so if you guys are getting a little hot inside you can sit here and dump the cabin pressure if need to you can adjust it um, manually um, by ramming air in or setting it to its default setting we have ram air left engine right engine both engines and turn the ram air setting off for the uh, engine temp and then obviously if you're getting a little cold um, you can set the temperature up to the hot air or set it back down to cold okay we have our rain repellent switches using air uh, that will be forced across the windshield or you can set it to off and then you have the engine probe uh, anti-ice switch by default it's in the auto position you can switch it to off or override it to force it to be on we have our hydraulic transfer pump okay it's normally in the um, normal mode if for any reason you need to shut it off that's how you do it again can't think of why we would and once again I can't put it in the back in the down position again because the system is off and then we have our master test switch to select a master test mode which we'll go over in the detailed startup tutorial we would right click select the setting that we wish to be on and then right click again to activate the test okay right click again click it to your desired setting and right click one more time and then we have our emergency hydraulic flow I'm not going to tick the switch this time since it seems to be uh, not going well in my favor every time I do that but you have your emergency hyd uh, flight hydraulics which you can set them to auto which is low low manually or high if needed and then we have our camera switch which is currently not modeled in DCS and we have our VTR control panel which is again part of the uh, recorder which obviously one more time is not modeled in DCS all right so the last thing that we're going to take a peek at before we call it a day here for the forward end of the cockpit will be the um, flight stick okay so again last segment here we're going to take a look at the flight stick first here we have our bomb or pickle button the bomb release button we have our pitch and roll trim hat our weapon select switch and then here we have our um, DLC and maneuver flap command switch or command wheel um, what this does is the DLC or direct lift control um, is used to control the vertical glide slope position without actually using control inputs from the stick okay it uses or the throttles for that matter um, it uses the two inboard spoilers on each wing as well as um, small corrections from the vertical sta uh, stabilizers on the back to uh, control the lift of the aircraft and the DLC can be engaged with this button here this button here is our DLC engage and disengage button as well as our um, countermeasures dispense switch so you would use the same button to dispense countermeasures as well as to activate the uh, direct lift control 
In the front of the stick, you can't really see them, but on your pinky, there's a little button there that disengages the nose wheel steering and autopilot reference. So based on the, uh, as we talked about earlier, whatever configuration your autopilot is in on the left-hand side of the panel here, by depressing that button here, will actually engage that configuration. And then the paddle in front is the um, autopilot emergency disengage. And then finally, obviously in front, just right about here, there's obviously our weapon firing trigger. Okay, it's a two-stage trigger. The first uh, detent enables the um, cameras as well as the uh, tracking uh, uh, systems. And the second detent releases the, uh, the whichever weapon you have currently selected, whether that be the, um, the gun, the sidewinder, or the sparrow or phoenix. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I truly hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, this aircraft so far has been a lot of fun to learn. There's so much more coming. There's so much more to it. In the next tutorial, we'll start the aircraft up and then take a look at a few more instruments, such as the HUD and the uh, uh, two screens that uh, we didn't go over today. Um, basically, we're going to go over anything in the next tutorial that required the aircraft to be started up to go over. I hope this guy is I hope this helped you guys. Please let me know in the comments uh, below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, as usual, this is Overkill. Catch you guys next time.